And we all are equipped physically and mentally, young, old, men, women, and children. It doesn't, it's because it's not about the age or the gender that makes someone potential or great. What advances a person is not but their mind. So when the mind is developed, in regardless to the age or the gender, when the mind is developed, then you can accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. Are y'all with me? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that the brain of man is infinite. He said you can't change your people without changing their thinking. It's thought that actually changes people. Did did y'all hear that? He went on to say that we had 14 billion brain cells and that thought traveled in between these cells and around these cells at 24 billion miles per second. Didn't he say that? Then he gave us the math for the speed of other things. He said the earth and the other eight planets move at 1,037 and one-third miles per hour. Then he said it was something faster than that. Sound 1,120 feet per second. Then he said something faster even than that. Light, 186,000 miles per second. But the fastest thing that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us in our study is the speed of thought. Why? Because the thought is superior to all of them. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. But a word is thought and sound married together. So before there ever was a word, there had to be sound and there had to be thought. Thought brought the light. Light means birth to the sound. And the sound brought birth to the planet. And y'all still with me? Yes, sir. The Holy Quran says that any time that Allah deems a thing, he simply says to it. He, he says to it, being it is. In the Bible it says, and God said, let there be light. And God said, let us make man. Anytime that the originator wants to bring something into the physical world, he speaks the thing into existence. Your words mean something, brother and sister. Your words are actually substitutes for reality. They're designed to replace reality temporarily. But they must grow and mature until they become an actual physical manifestation of that which you spoke. Y'all still with me? Well, if that's the case, then this brain, this mind, these thoughts traveling at 24 billion miles per second, this is the primary area of development that we should study and work on. Did y'all hear me? Right now, black people spend... $5.7 $5.7 billion a year on getting their hair done and making their body smell good. Did, did you hear what I just said? And only $300 million on books. Billions of dollars on hair care and beauty product and only a few hundred million on books. Something wrong with that mathematics. We should not be investing more money in dressing up the outside of our hair than we are dressing up the inside of our hair. Right now, black people spend on the average of over $30 billion on electronic devices, cell phones, iPods. So we got the latest and the most up-to-date cell phone up to our hair, but don't have the most, the latest and most up-to-date thoughts in our brain. Something wrong with that mathematics. No, the science of the mind is where the real battle has always been. The scripture says that we war not with flesh and blood, but we war with principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So while the whole world on the ticker at the bottom of the screen has WMDs and you thinking about Iraq and Iran and weapons of mass destruction, the real enemy is not weapons of the mass destruction. The real enemy to us as black people have been weapons of mass deception. We've been tricked and hoodwinked and bamboozled for the last 400 years. The mind is so powerful that it has the ability to be a magnet and a magnifying glass. Meaning whatever you think about, you will attract it to yourself. 
and he will also make it bigger than what it was before you attracted it. So you have to be careful, not just in what we say and what we do, but we have to be careful at what we think. The Holy Quran says that the throne of Allah's power is ever upon water. Well, this doesn't mean that Allah got some big throne sitting out in the middle of the ocean. Right. But if you do the math, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that there was 139,685,000 square miles of water on the planet. Is that right? He said the Pacific Ocean covers 68,634,000 square miles. The Atlantic Ocean covers 41,321,000 square miles. The Indian Ocean covers 29,430,000 square miles. And the lakes and the rivers cover 1 million square miles. But when you add that all up, it comes up to 140,385,000 square miles. Well, where's the other 700,000 square miles of sea and ocean? It's not on the planet, it's inside the human being. So when Allah said that his throne is on water, he's not talking about in the middle of a lake, pond, a river, or an ocean, but right inside the brain is where Almighty God Allah rests and resides at. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The Bible shows us that the battle of Satan against us has always been a mind war. Is that truth? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that when you look at the word scripture, the base word of scripture is script. If someone has a script for a play or a script for a movie, a script for a play is a pre-recorded document that dictates in advance thoughts and words and actions before the stage is ever set or the camera's ever turned on. Is that right? Well, just like an actor or actress can read a script to see what role they want to try out for, you and I have been given Bible and Holy Quran script chores. Not for no play or for no movie, but for life. And we can read them and determine what role that we want to play. Have you ever wondered why you don't read nobody's last names in the Bible? What's Moses' last name? You say, well, you know, Jesus Christ. Christ ain't his last name. That's his title. You don't read about any last names because it's not as important to know what family they came from as it is the function they came from. Because the function that they came from, you and I will experience it in the modern time. Does that make sense? So when you read the Bible and the Holy Quran, you're not looking at a historical frame of reference. Most of the time you're looking at today or tomorrow. You're not looking at somebody else. You're really looking at yourself. The scriptures of the Bible can even go beyond just people into being interpersonal. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says the first time we read about this devil or Satan, he appears in the book of Genesis as a serpent. Is that right? A serpent. He comes out of a tree, right? A tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Trees don't have knowledge on them. Y'all know that, right? You can't go to no tree and get a banana on one side and a Bible verse on the other. And trees never grow two fruits. Trees always grow one fruit based off of their nature. So you don't find a tree that's growing cherries on one side and oranges on the other. Apples on one side and pineapples on the other. Each fruit is dictated by the tree and each tree produces one fruit. But here's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it's a tree that grows knowledge. It's not a tree. It's a human being. Affectionately, they call it an apple that Eve ate. Is that right? Notice that the apple is the symbol of the teachers. And whenever a student comes to school, their first day of school, they bring an apple to put on their teacher's desk. Why? Because the apple represents an idea, concept, or mind. The student is saying that I'm bringing my mind to you. 
You can have my mind and make it and work with it and do with you what you want. So eating of someone's apples is eating of someone's ideas. So Satan is starting off as a snake in the garden working on an Adam and an Eve. When we went to school before we started first grade, we went to something called kindergarten. Is that right? Kindergarten is German for kind of a garden. Just like you plant seeds in a garden that you intend to see grow in the future. Your and my babies are taken before first grade. And they have seeds planted in them that don't pop up until sixth and seventh grade and ninth grade and sophomore year. And we say, man, our babies is crazy. Something wrong with them. They got attention deficit disorder. I don't know what's happening. They crazy. They just, they, it's because you don't know what that kindergarten teacher put in your brain of your baby. So it's best to get your children out of the devil's killing fields and bring them to Muhammad school or teach them yourself. So you know what's going in the kind of a garden called the mind. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said the role of Adam is to be the protector of the woman. But while Adam slept, Eve was deceived. Your conscious mind's job is to protect your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind does not have the authority to morally discriminate against what's put inside of it. It's just like the earth. If you put green bean seeds in, you're not going to grow no carrots. You can't put falsehood in and grow truth from the falsehood. So when the mind has in the subconscious mind, it's guaranteed to manifest it. The problem is, is that sometimes the seeds that we had put in our mind from the teacher, from that spirit killer in the institution, or even from a blind, deaf, and dumb family member that told you that you wasn't going to be nothing and everybody in the family is X, Y, and Z. So you thought you rejected it. But it's down deep in your subconscious mind. And it pops up 10 years, 20 years later. And since you don't remember where you got it from and who told you, you think it came from within yourself. And anything that comes from within self, you don't send through the same process of logic. So when it comes from within self, it sounds like you. So you think that you came up with it on your own, so you roll with it. Not realizing that it was a demon or a spirit killer that put a wicked seed inside of your mind that manifests itself in the future with your voice attached to it. Where you believe it came from you and it didn't come from you. It came from your open enemy. So the mind was the original place that we see the war taking place. Y'all hear me? Later on we read about in Isaiah this, this enemy becoming a Leviathan. Now he's a deep sea monster. Well if the brain sits on water the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this deep sea monster represents submarines in the physical world, but could it represent also in the spiritual world those thoughts in your subconscious mind? Then you read later on at the end of the scripture, where well, now he's become a great wonder in heaven and he's called a dragon. So now he's a great wonder in heaven, dragon. Where's heaven at? Heaven is the highest region of a particular environment. Well, the highest region of this particular environment is your mind. So now the serpent became a Leviathan and matured into a dragon. The question is, what have we matured into to actually defeat this modern day dragon that's posted up inside the heaven? Y'all still with me? Well, if that's all said and it's the truth, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad went on to say to us in conclusion, that the final battle would be in the sky. Did he say that? And he taught us about the mother plane. The world calls it a UFO, but we call it an IFO. They call it an unidentified flying object, but we call it an identified flying object. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that it exists and it follows and backs the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan up everywhere that he goes and you've seen it with your own eyes you just don't want to believe what you've seen y'all know i'm telling the truth well if the final battle is in the sky 
Listen to this on page 298 of the great illuminating book called Message to the Black Man. He said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you don't need navies, ground forces, air forces, or standing armies to fight this last war. Did y'all hear that? Yes, the navy is in the water. Come on. Ground forces and standing armies are on the ground. Come on. But the air force is in the traditional definition of what we call sky. On, so the last and final battle in the sky is more than just the mother wheel in space. It's also the conflict that exists inside the mind. For a plane is more than just a physical contraption used to carry someone in the air. The dictionary says that the definition of plane is also a level of wisdom, a level of development, a level of dignity, a level of character is what a plane is. Any time that one begins to read and study and open the books to become wise, when the book is open, it looks like a bird with wings. Is that right? Why? Because in order for you to fly above civilization, you have to have wisdom in your mind. And the more wisdom you have, the higher your plane or level of existence is. The more wisdom you have, the more development and dignity and character that you can muster up. Does that make sense? So to get on the mother plane is not something we should be sitting in our dark room just memorizing our lessons and not going out here saving our people. The mother planes when we get the high science and math of the mind where we exist 40 miles above the problems of this civilization where we have that bird's eye view where we can see our enemy coming in advance and we know how to move and maneuver in the world and we like those bomber planes have a bomb attached to us with this truth that we drop on the brains of our people that drill down into their mind one mile deep which happens to be 5,280 feet. That's the same distance of the subconscious mind. And we can go and blow up all that beast wisdom in their head and resurrect the God knowledge that is recorded and buried in their genetic composition. And when you drop the bomb of the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, there are no duds. There are no ineffective bombs. There are no blanks in the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The whole world tried to say that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't know what he was talking about. But he challenged all of them to prove that he was a lie. And offered them $10,000 per word. Message to the black man has 110,500 words in it. Fall of America has 80 through 3,525 words. Our Savior has arrived has 70,850 70, words. And each to live one and two has 113,750 words. If he was telling a lie, they could have got $3,786,250,000. But didn't nobody cash in on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? All praise is due to Allah. So you don't need no Dr. Phil. You don't need no Atkins. You don't need none of the empirical knowledge of this wicked world. You need the explanation of the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and to follow the example of a man that's in front of us. That's the greatest leader, teacher, and guy we've ever seen. In conclusion, all the studying that man can do is like the homework part. We study, we put the wisdom inside of our mind, but every now and then when you come to take a test, it helps. In fact, sometimes more than all our study to actually have an example at the top of the page. Do y'all remember that? And even though you might have studied as intense as you could, it didn't get you rooted in solving the problems. But when you've seen that example where someone actually worked it out for you in advance, then you have faith and confidence by use of that formula that you can solve the problems. I'm telling y'all, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Minister Louis Falcon is the example at the top of the page of life. Follow him and fork his formula, and we will be successful. Thank you for listening. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.